everyone, I'm Jessica Minhas, and welcome to Work With Me. I'm so excited today. We're going to be taking a little departure again um, from our, our last show, which was on trafficking, and talking a little bit more about some fun stuff and entertainment. I'm joined by Virginia Hammer, who is with the Mid-Atlantic Theatre Company. And today, we're just going to talk a little bit about acting and what it means to be an actor, producer, director yep. uh, in theatre and film abroad here domestically in New York and in Newark now, it sounds. Right. Uh, so let's get started. Virginia, okay. can you tell me a little bit about your background? How in the world did you get well, into this business? Have, You've been in it for I, a while. I have been around. Um, oh, I was very privileged. I got to go to a fantastic boarding school for the arts. I was always in the school plays before that. I moved all around the world. Every two or three years growing up, my father, my parents are both Geminis, and they just are smart people that can't sit still. And they're always changing jobs. And um, we were chatting before. We share a rather gypsy background. We too. do, you, yeah. I, you got Army family, you yeah. know, so All right. it comes with the territory. Right. Well, like, well, you know what we're called. We're called third culture kids. Uh, Did you, have you ever heard that saying? Yeah, well, I, I may have come across it, but you reminded me, like, yeah, that's very, very third cool. Third culture kids. The third estate, whatever that may be. Well, what it means, uh, yeah, well, you, your father, your father served in the Army, <laughs> and my dad served in the Army of of the the economy everything starts with economics as he drove so you into guys my were brain. based here in the He's states a banker mostly uh, okay. we did get to live in belgium when i was a teenager which was beautiful but anyway anyway so um to get to the matter at hand the arts um so i went to nyu halfway through my senior year did you then. always want to be an actor or is that yeah something? well i can remember being four years old i was always peter pan always peter pan my dad my mom built me a uh, this was in long island a flying machine on the swing set because i was always and anyway but I can remember being four years old, and actually, I may be lying, I might have been nine years old in Virginia or Maryland, but I, I was an actress when I was four. I always had this authoritatively huge, big singing voice. But I remember consciously wondering, teacher, actress, teacher, actress, hmm, when I was nine. I wrote a letter to Mr. Rogers, remember Mr. Rogers? Yep, I remember. And he replied, well, Ginny, I can't tell you for sure what you should do. He did um, reply? Yeah, he did. And uh, but I've always wait. I, he replied. That's, yeah, and I wish I still had the letter, but I don't that's have it anymore. That's kind of wonderful. No, but actually. I yeah, isn't it fun? Fred. Yeah, my, and, and my dad is Fred, and my great grandfather. My last name is Hammer. Uh, Frederick Herman Hammer, the carpenter, came from Stuttgart. My grandfather was a history teacher on Long Stuttgart. Island. Stuttgart. Stuttgart. My dad became basically number two of all Chase Bank. My dad got his PhD in economics, age 24. And I'm the oldest, so I have to, Jeez, I have to follow, the follow in those footsteps. I yeah, but it's like great. I need to so go it's to good. And I feel I have to give back because I was raised with a lot okay, of privilege. Okay, okay, let's, let's take it back, though. So yeah. you, you always wanted to be an actor right. ever since you were a kid. But were I've Peter always Pan. regarded teaching. Look, the, nowadays, it, I, I, be, I eventually became an inner city school teacher. In my, but you were at NYU. But, but I was a professional actor, so okay, yes. Um, I do think they're very closely akin. I also was a legal secretary. A lot of um, lawyers are very akin. They all have to do with. The word. So you went to NYU for theater. Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. You got to keep me on track. Yeah, there. and then you and then you did three years there, and then you decided to go. Yeah, abroad. no, no, I got my BA, you know. Okay. Bachelor of Fine Arts at NYU, and then halfway through my senior year, my best friend still to this day, she she at the time was married to a big Broadway director, Hi Walt, Hi Walt Jones, and I was cast in Fools by Neil Simon with the Alaska Repertory Theater, and I got my equity card. I was 22. Where in Alaska? In the Anchorage. Alaska Rep. In Anchorage. Yeah, we toured all around the state. It was really oh, great. Really great. And um, I was doing off of Broadway. Then I was very old for an actress. I went for a three-year three program. How to, old were you? I'm, I'm telling you, daughter. All right, daughter. So I was 28. I got out of a three-year program in England at Central, as we were chatting about before. I was 25 when I started that. I was the second oldest out of the 28 people in our year. And then we had some real famous, famous people in my class. I'm still friends with today. About. Eight out of 28 or so working actors, about four or five international movie stars in stage 88, Jason Isaacs. What James made you decide to go to, um, up to go to, to England? Well, yeah, I didn't get into Yale or Juilliard. So, so you were thinking it about was off to England, I went. Sorry, you were thinking about doing your master's? Is that oh, yeah. Well, I wasn't doing diddly squat. I got fat. I was temping. I was making a lot as a word processor in the early 80s. And um, I need to get myself in gear. So, you know, once again, Dad had to pay. And no, I, I raised a lot of money myself this time, and I need, I got even more training. I mean, you know, the result is I'm probably about the best trained actor in the North American <coughs> continent. But uh, you know, uh -huh. 
the never ending, the perpetual student, as they say. But, I mean, but isn't an actor, you're yeah, always you in know, class. You're always yeah, learning. You're, you're always, always learning. learning. That's right. So I, I got to be in some wonderful shows. I got big agents, two big agents. Sorry, so you... In you, England. You, you I were was 28, still... although I told my agents I was 25, and they seemed to believe me. I never knew if they... Okay. Yeah, I told them I was 25. Because I mean, you know, that, even that is extremely old for a woman to go into acting. Do you, th do you still feel like that today? Well, it, it just depends. I mean, if you're a character actress, you could start when you're 70. I mean, you, you got a lousy resume if you haven't got anything yet. And acting is, frankly, hey, all you that want to be an actor, it is who you know. Yes, it is. It is who you know. It is timing. And, and if you get rejection, and you get rejection every day, you cannot fall apart like I did. Get angry, get sad, eat, get fat, then get skinny, wreck your health year after year. Nobody knows if they call you in for a part. If you, oh, is she going to be 110 pounds this time, or is she going to be 120? Can we talk about the difference between characters? You've got to have emotional strength, or you're just going to get sucked up alive. And you know, the more you audition, the more chance you have to make it. But you've got to be at the right place at the right time. You've got to know people, or you're, you, know, you won't make it. What it's is all the, about persistence. Okay, what is the difference between a character and a regular actor? I, I'm sure a lot of people aren't sure what, what the difference is when you refer well, to that. Well, what do you think the difference is? Well, I know, but you're the professional here. You're the guest. Well, I'm a teacher. I like, we like to ask questions. That's how people learn. <laughs> um, reflection and query-based learning. Well, you know, I mean, I guess the main stereotype is actors. <laughs> there's so many nuances. and but. You're okay, I think you're, character, you're, you're character well actor is somebody who specializes in those like kind of like those huge character um, parts. Like I, the first person that comes to mind is, is somebody like, oh gosh, like Jim Carrey. He okay, right? He's a comedian. What is your type? But he um, he does like sort of these extreme. Right. Or Johnny Depp. Johnny okay. Depp, I think, is okay. a good. Okay, well, it de it depends. I mean, very often you you play quite close to yourself, and then you're going to be more believable. But it, depending on the size of your personality or what kind of looks you have or whatever, uh, and an actor sh really should ideally have a really good sense of humor. And it depends how much of your makeup is humor. I don't know. What are, what are, who are your mean, favorite, uh, uh, favorite character actors? A character actor actors? is someone that is not the pretty, pretty person who is the love interest, usually. You know? The friend. The love interest. The friend or the bad guy okay, or, you know, the whatever. The ingenue. Yeah. And eventually we all grow out of ingenue. You, I don't care how gorgeous you are, even Sophia Loren, even... Well, maybe not Sophie. She has the perfect proportions. But, you know, even gorgeous Julie Andrew, I don't know who, you know, you've got to grow older eventually, right? This yeah. is true. Yeah. This is true. And then they get all the character parts, and the people that were funny looking to begin with are, you know, kind of screwed. Depending on, uh, yeah, that's another thing that wrecked my career in England. There was a big recession that hit England in the early 90s, and I. Um, so when you, when you say wrecked your career, what, what well, happened? Well, I single handedly torched it a little bit with. Um, you really, you have to have, you have to have emotions of steel. Why is that? Because you're going to deal with so much rejection, and it's just the game. And you got to get back on the horse and audition the next day. You can't fall to pieces. Um, you have to, you, you also have to love to schmooze. You have to, you have to be this party animal. Mm -hmm. You have to, yeah. and I, I never really ever, and I knew this when I was a young teen. I remember being in the back seat of the car. We lived in South Bend, Indiana, and we were coming back from seeing the ballet in Chicago or something. And, it was clear I was going to be an actress, and I was in the middle seat. My mom and dad were querying me in a, from the front seat. This okay, so are you going to do soap operas? Are you going to do commercials, Ginny? And I said, what? That schlock? Are you kidding? And I, I, I saw them exchange a look between the two of them, like, oh, Jesus, we're going to be supporting this person until we die. But um, I never was the most commercially minded person. I, always, I was always extremely educated. I mean, Shakespeare all the way, not just Shakespeare. I was always a big bookworm, and um, I always kind of always, I think I always had the tendency to want to be my own boss and run the show also. But I just, commerciality in me, no, look, it's a business. It is a business, and you're here to entertain. And my favorite actor of all time, I really do have one favorite, basically, is James Cagney. He knew, this is a job. I'm here to entertain. And if you can uplift people at the same time, that's great. Shakespeare was able to do both at the same time. So, but you're saying a lot of the, great the emotional strength required to sustain a long-term career But if you in, feel uh, like the, the commercial people are the gatekeepers and they're holding a, an amazing, passionate, smart, fun woman from the audience who, the audience always loved me, and the gatekeepers, the business people are, are stopping me. Oh, therefore, I think I'll go home and eat, you know, six yogurts instead of only one. Is that the schmoozing that you were talking it, about? And take it out on yourself. Um, you've got to play the game. And I okay. just never was the greatest game player. And you've just really got, you have to do it. You have to be able to play the game. Yeah. 
and but I'm happier now. I like to I like to I run up my own 501c3 nonprofit theater company. So now. is that the, the for the good of the people of New York because they don't have enough. I don't want to go up against hundreds of theater companies in New York. It's already pretty saturated to me. Newark right now. I moved there almost five years ago. It's a time of such opportunity. Jessica, there are about six really good art galleries. Before now we in get Newark. to that, people I just want to take it now. back really quick mm -hmm. though, because you were saying right. that you you were in London and you you just did you make that decision? You were like, I need to just go back to the States and start my no, own company. No, I, I, I bought a flat there. I never wanted to come back to the States. It was the years of Reagan. I mean, not that Thatcher was, you know, I'm not even a knee-jerk liberal anymore. I'm pretty middle of the road. I, you have to work with the people that have resources. And there's no sense being sh a shrill person to condemn everybody with selfish, more resources. Although so I, you bought the flat and then you... I know, I go off all, all, on these tangents, but... Um, what made you decide to come back? I didn't want to come back to the States because I felt I could see the social fabric of the USA unraveling and I didn't, I thought, this is a, a pigsty. You know, there's okay. too much greed. I okay. don't want to be where there is such... America has always been a land of the young, of the brave, of the entrepreneurial types, but it was going way too much in the dumbed down. You know, Europe has always been, you, you know, you live there a little bit behind the dumbing down trend, and I like that. So I didn't want to come back to the States, it was a but I ruined my career. I ruined what it. What happened? Well, a recession hit, and I was labeled a complete crazy by my agents, and I don't blame them. My behavior, we won't go into the details. But I, I, I don't, so it was painful. It so was your, very painful. Your agencies I decided back, to let you go? Uh, they would, I know they would have eventually. Okay. I and went so back years later, and they, they, they loved saying hi. But anyway, I went back and I got a master's degree of elementary education Where, where outside did you do Philadelphia. It? So you made the Eastern decision University. to come back. How yeah, was that for I, I decided that to become a pretty, teacher. Okay. And an inner city school teacher. My, my parents were, why aren't you working with the kids in the suburbs? They're more manageable. And I just, if you think I'm going to bore myself with those people yet more of my life, you got another thing coming. No, I'm, I'm more needed, it seems to me, in the inner city, you know, so. They fashioned a program whereby I could do my student teaching Eastern University in West Philly uh, in an inner city school. And I, for eight years, I was in the trenches. I was teaching. A lot of the kids were born addicted to crack. I was in some, I was in North Philly, West Philly, and South Philly. 14 years later, I am still tight with about eight of my students. The last couple of years, I was with Title I. I was teaching in uh, Catholic schools, but I was paid the public school rate, which is a little better mm -hmm. pay. And I was teaching English second language to Asian American kids in South Philly, and I'm still, they are doing so well so now. You just, and I don't have to pay for these kids. You really just fell in love with But I did a lot of long-term subbing. I did, um, I did all ages. I did pre-K. I did, I did all ages. I did remedial English with high school boys one year. Um, I, I taught music, although I wasn't certified for music. I taught music for six months at two different schools. That was wonderful. I taught after-school theater for the city of Philadelphia for one year. After-school drama, it was called Conflict Resolution Theater. Hi, Judy Nelson. They do great work, Conflict Resolution Theater. Who's Judy Nelson? Oh, she runs the program. I don't know if she's Conflict told. Resolution Theater? Isn't it great? What is that? Well, that is an accepted um, form of theater, actually, now. You're teaching kids. Look, life is conflict, right? And that's right. what makes drama interesting. And that is life anyway. And, uh, a well-shaped play has a, or a episode on a sitcom has a beginning, middle, and end. There's something's going to happen. People always, look, I'll tell you something. I learned this when I played Antigone at Eastern University. There, there, are, there is right and there is wrong very often in a, in a well-told story and drama. But at the same time, paradoxically, there are two sides to every story. You know, truth is relative. So there are a lot of tensions there. And the more, this is a global economy now. We're over, an overpopulated world. The 1% hoard a lot of the, there, there aren't, quite enough jobs to go around. There's a lot of conflict and it's not gonna get that much better. And especially in, in the inner city where families are less stable. And um, look, I don't wanna say everybody, not at all, not everybody, but I've come across this quite a lot. But there are gonna be problems and people very often, I say it's so sad, there are gangs and drugs and things cropping up a little more in some of the cities now and, and racial tensions and religious issues, Jesus Lord and Buddha and Muhammad and Krishna and everybody. So uh, people, when they feel threatened and angry and sad and, and fearful, they erupt into, and especially the youth, they, they copy the behavior that they see and they just resort to physical violence so easily and there are alternatives to that. And we had three steps. We would do an improv and we would, a big conflict would flare up in this improv with the kids and the teacher, whatever, the adult, doing the improv together and we would have three steps. It was kind of like, the fire people, the firefighters, stop 
drop and roll, but it was stop. Drop it. Breathe. Talk it out. And that was conflict resolution theater. So I've been working on that with the kids in Newark. I've been doing after school drama in various places, schools all around Newark. And then you also have I your... want to get working with the prisons now too, Essex County Prisoners Doing Theater. That's a big goal. There's a big website page on my website. What's Mid your website? Atlantic. Hi everybody. www.midlantictheater.org. It's a 501c3, not .com. Um, it is not Mid-Atlantic. So I know you, you think been, it is, but it's Mid-Atlantic. How long have you been running Mid-Atlantic? About six years now. Okay. I produced Henry VI, Shakespeare. Well, how, what made you decide to do that? I produced a few things in New York, but it was I always knew that I was going to do it in Newark. I was just building a little bit of producerial experience because they need it more. They need it more. What and do you mean by it's that? It's saturated in New York. There are hundreds of theater companies. I don't want to compete against when hundreds of theater companies. When you say a community needs funding. theater, what does that mean? Okay. I'm glad you asked. Good question. Um, I don't pretend to think theater can solve everybody's problems, and 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 everybody should love theater as, as much as I always have. That happens to be where my skill set led. I've I've written a couple plays too, um, and if everybody loved theater and everybody was airy fairy and was all about the arts, there wouldn't be anything to base theater to write theater about. It's about real life, That's and great. and you know and and the, but on on the other and and most people are. Let's face it, especially the guys. What are, I don't mean that. Sec, food, sex, money, sports. Food, sex, money, sports. Food, sex, money, sports. That's the human race. But every once in a while, we bring some arts in. Dance, music, theater, visual arts. Theater is very collaborative. It involves a lot of the arts together. You've got visual going. You can have music and dance up there. You can have the written word. It's very collaborative and very rich. It's very layered. But it's it, the arts help us reflect on us, our, our on ourselves as humans, I think. It helps us step step back and reflect. And we can step in each other's shoes when we tell stories in theater. We can, we can understand other, other people's points of view. We can get the issues up there. And, and a really good writer can pare away all the fat and really get to the crux of it. And we can ponder the choices we make as, as, as a society. And even and, and beginning with the, with the cavemen, they were, they were making up stories. People seem to need to put theater together, even when there's no money. They do it anyway. You know, the, uh, the cave people were, oh, we got a big scary mammoth hunt coming up tomorrow and somebody might die. Uh, uh, we gotta get some food to feed ourselves. And what about the ancestors? Can we bring some of their help and wisdom in? And, 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 and all these beautiful animals we're killing and it's gonna be a big drama out there. And, and let's tell the story. Let's, and, and what about these heroes later on with the Greeks? So you and, feel like the, and the gods and the forces against us and with us. And so you feel like the community theater stories. has been um, therapeutic for the community, is yeah. it, would you say? Okay. Mm -hmm. And educational and, yeah. How many shows per year? Uh, I'll tell you, well, year I'll tell you, you about Newark. Doing? Newark is very polarized. It's, there's a white area, there tends to be a black area. There, it's mixed also. Ironbound, fantastic, great restaurants, Brazilian, Portuguese, Latino. Um, Newark is 52% African American as of the last recent census. It's about 23% white, something. It's about, no, is that no, a little less than that? It's about 23% Latino. It's very mixed. But, you know, just like in any place in most of the world, people click together in their groups and they don't always get a chance to mix and, 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 and step in each other's shoes enough. And I think theater can be very useful for that, you know. I'm not saying you're not going to usually spend a great deal of your time with your homies, of course, that's a natural thing, but I think it's a helpful thing for all society to mix together. Have you been able no to bring that diversity or poor, into or your or white um, or, or, theater company? Okay, so what do you, sorry? Um, have you been able to bring the diversity and into the And how many shows do we do? Shows, no. yes, 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 as much as possible, yes. for And, and multi-generational, too. I think oh, that's wonderful. very important yeah. now. A, a lot of young people are, are really losing track of the generation just before them and their grandparents' generation and the history and the legacy and the cultural legacy and the old people. It's, n it's never good when, when the older generations feel isolated and left out. Yeah, you know, and I think that's a great point too for, a for actors thing. as well because um, you know something that I think is a big misconception with the entertainment industry is that you have to, I mean, if you want to be a superstar and be that famous ingenue, um, then yeah, there is sort of like you need to start you know, out of college, go to school, get trained, and then go for it. It's, yeah, but it doesn't mean basically. that once you hit you know, your, your early 30s, like in my case, or you know, on up, it doesn't mean that you can't 
can't still be a part of um, the theater community. Yes, the film community. and there are plenty of actors that, and I try to bring in people that, are, are, I have so many people in Newark, because they never had the opportunity either. They'd say, oh, I always wanted to try. And I can I can spot an, a, a potential actor like that. We, we all really are. We all act sometimes. I act like I can get along with my boss today, you know, you're yeah, right. Right? Yeah, we all yeah, are actors yeah. underneath sometimes. But no, really, everybody's got self-expression that can come out. Really, everybody out there, if you, you know, I include myself, sometimes I don't, still to this day, don't do a healthy thing that I could do if I'm depressed or, or What do you think that healthy person but people is? Can, what you, is that you healthy can, thing? You can sing a song, you can write, draw a picture. Don't just be passive and listen to someone else's music all the time with your earphones. Don't just uh, do the video games. The, write your own picture. Write, 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 write a true. little poem. Write a little rap. It's not just for the stars to do a uh, rap. Write your own or, or um, write a little tiny. I'm always trying to get brand new writers to send me um, 10 page plays, you know, beginning, middle, and end. A, certain amount of character. Tell the story of your grandparents. Tell the story of your wacky neighbor down the street. Or make up a couple characters. What about the aliens? What if they, the, the, the boys love that. You know, I mean, express yourself. And, and, and there's no right and wrong. And, and anybody could be an actor no matter when. No matter yeah. when. Yeah. No matter when. It's a funny old world and let's all get in and, and, and be it and do it and act it and not just watch it. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's great. And yeah. so you guys are doing about you said eight well, shows. Well, you know, I would love my goal is to uh, look. This may not happen in under my leadership, but I hope it does. It, it's a lot of fundraising, and that's very much my responsibility now. Um, but I uh, my goal is to have an equity salary. You know, Actors Equity, the union, way up there, good. Uh, regional theater for Newark. It's the biggest city in New Jersey. It does not have theater. I mean, it's, it's had a very proud tradition. But now it Amiri does. Baraka, you the guys great, are it. he just died last year, the great, uh, the great poet and playwright. His son is now the new mayor, Ras Baraka of Newark, and he's wonderful. He's working with Obama and stuff, uh, a lot of community based um, volunteership, mentorship. Mm -hmm. Stuff, lots of pro. He's always been great as a t helping the South Ward with housing and, and all these good things I've been talking about. Um, it, it's a growing. It's a city of opportunity. So you guys now. are the only. Uh, but we are the only right now. York. There okay. is a wonderful young uh, guy, Rodney um, Gilbert. Hi, Rodney. He has a group called Yendor, and they do shows sporadically. He teaches acting at nearby Drew University too, and he directs some good things. He's the only one I know of. There was a group called African Global Theater Perspective, but they left shortly before I came to Newark four or five years ago. They just ran out of money, and he, I, I gather he was a great guy. He went back to Ghana. Uh, there was, way back in the day, Newark had like 34 theaters, including movie oh, theaters. Oh, what happened? Small vaudeville houses, you know, like in the 1920s, what 30s, happened? 40s, 50s. Then World War II hit. Okay. Uh, the, bla the white flight left for the suburbs after World War II, the 50s, 60s, they all left for the suburbs. Newark lost a lot of its manufacturing base, just like a lot of American cities. Yeah. They lost their jobs, they lost a lot of their money, education, their tax base. People started shopping. It was a retail capital, all these beautiful, huge department stores, Hanes, Bambergers, blah, blah. They all started shopping in the malls. Now all these big, gorgeous department stores are being turned into condos now. There's a lot. Right now, the brand new Prudential, the brand new Prudential skyscraper, uh, they built that thing fast. It's been less than a year. It's, it's going to be opening so you, you 20, 21 stories downtown, a, a few blocks from where I live. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> Um, so that's opening that's next month. Next month. You really feel like this Prudential is the time is the for Prudential is the third Newark. largest um, insurance company in the world, and the HQ are uh, in Newark. And, and Panasonic just relocated to Newark. We, we've got the airport. We got the Port Authority. There's a lot going on. Yeah. It's a city of great promise now. That's And it always was a great city of jazz. Um, Sarah Vaughn comes from there, and, uh, and so we have about um, we have about four minutes okay. left, and I'm just wondering, you know, what is a message that you would like to give young art actors, directors, producers, if they're watching? You know, what would you like to say to them about if they're considering uh, theater, film, and TV as a career choice? Yeah. What's like that well, okay. one thing that you wish yeah, they? It's funny that I'm being asked this because I'm having the memories now of being a freshman at NYU. Yeah. Christopher Reeve came and spoke with us, and uh, Sam Waterston. They were young then, 1978. And uh, what's it like? How can you make it as an actor? Be, yeah. Be this starry-eyed 18-year-old. Okay, y'all, here's what I would say. I guess this is my one shot at a big Oscar speech encouraging you guys. So, Please. A Tony speech. Take okay, it away. so it's perseverance. Okay. It's perseverance. What do you mean by that? It's, um, look, everybody's got talent. Okay. And you do, you need talent. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a few out there that don't, that, that kind of make it sometimes that don't have that much. I won't name any names. It's all subjective, I'm sure. But uh, 
most people do have a lot of talent. And, and, and yeah. New York, you know, you know, New York is just full of talent. There are so many good actors. And a lot, of them, a lot of them never make it. I've seen so many, I know so many brilliant off-off-Broadway actors and they never made it. But you know, life is just a process. So what do you mean by perseverance? But then? what you need is, you, it, it, it's all about persistence. You just have to keep doing it. You just okay. have to keep doing it. And that is what Sam Waterston and Christopher Reeve told us too. And it's about timing. It's about who you know and it's about luck. But like I said at the beginning, you're not going to get the good timing if you don't get back on that horse every single day. Yeah. You've got to get out there and audition every day. And that also every means... Every day. It, you have to be burning with ambition. And you have to schmooze and party and play the, the right people also, the, the business, the casting people also. So that like also I means never, meeting the casting directors, oh yeah. going to... Right. Um, yeah. yeah, going to and, sessions. And be prepared. Don't be lazy. And get, managers, get, talk you to You shouldn't friends. just have one monologue ready, like they always told me. You should have a couple classical... Yeah, Shakespeare dramatic, comedy. Or Greek. Or have, have your comedy. You have your tragedy mind. Don't be lazy. Work on your monologues. You know? Monologues are rough. Be ready. They you, are you, you never know when you're going to be asked to do one. This is true. And then, but, but then if you're doing audition with a cold reading, prepare. Like I, a couple of times I didn't prepare as well as I could, and sure enough, I didn't get the part. Well, uh, a million different kinds of auditions. Along and I have the way. to say, like, the, the way that I actually got represented was through friends that um, are not my type. I would okay, ask right. them to get repped, but their right. agencies, if they would make So they're not competing against you, so they'll yeah. cut you uh, so break. They'll, so they'll, uh, so yeah, they'll yeah, recommend yeah. me. If it was your exact yeah. type, she'd be like, oh, I don't know anybody else like me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you something fascinating to me, Jessica. The golden age of Hollywood, for the most part, I, I, not always, not always at all, but for the most part, the women that make it, and I hate to say this, you guys, but you know, you, you kind of really, I mean, so many of the women that make it, they have a mother behind them pushing them because it is even more. What is the, what it is is the even name? More, Stage moms. It is even more Stage competitive moms. for the women because everybody wants to be an actress. Okay, I would think we have about 30 seconds left. And there are more parts for the guys. Left. We have about 30 seconds left. Virginia, what is your website? How can people get in touch? Dot, thank you. We said it before. org. It's a good website. Check it out. The videos are more to be found right now on the Facebook page because it's and what is the Facebook on page? Memory page? Wise. Atlantic Theater Company, comma Newark. NJ. And we can learn more about Please you. Please click like if you don't mind and you'll see everything going on. You'll see videos of the kids acting out animals and characters and adults doing their workshops and uh, programs of the photos. And so if you like if you guys would like we to We need talent. We need talent, y'all. We need she's, actors. And she's writers. auditioning. So if you guys would like to learn more we need actors about and writers. Uh, we can like pay travel Virginia, expenses. I have to wrap it up. Okay. That's about um, it. <laughs> If you would like to learn more about Mid Atlantic Theater Company, please do check out her website. Come Thanks, back Jessica. and join us on Work With Me um, TV. You can check out more information about me or follow us along at jessicaminhaas.com, my Twitter handle, Jessica Minhas, and hashtag Work With Me for the TV show.